Can you get pregnant with PCOS? The answer is yes, yes, and absolutely yes. Let us talk about it. Hi ladies, welcome back to another video. If you are new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Nosa. I am so glad you joined us today. So in today's video, we want to explore some ways to maximize your chances of conceiving if you have PCOS. PCOS is one of the leading causes of infertility for a lot of women. It is one of the most common hormonal disorders affecting one in every 10 women of all ages. So whether you are a young girl or a woman in your reproductive years or a woman in your menopause, you can experience symptoms of PCOS that can make life very difficult for you. Now for every woman in a childbearing age, every month her ovaries will release an egg. That is called ovulation. Now, PCOS is an imbalance of hormone levels that can prevent ovulation from happening. So if you have PCOS, there's a high chance that you are not ovulating regularly or ovulating at all. However, a large percentage of women have been able to conceive and even reverse their PCOS condition with the right treatment and also some healthy lifestyle habits. So in this video, we're going to be looking at those treatments and lifestyle habits that you can develop to help boost your chances of getting pregnant. So what causes PCOS and how do you know that you have PCOS? To be formally diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have two out of the three main symptoms. And the first one is irregular cycles, which includes very long periods or very short periods, very heavy and painful periods, and not ovulating at all. Number two is hormonal imbalance with high levels of male hormones like androgen and testosterone circulating in your body. Now, as ladies, we all have some levels of androgen in our bodies. But if you are producing excessive amount of these hormones, these male hormones, then that can disrupt with ovulation. It can affect your reproductive hormones like estrogen, making it difficult for you to ovulate or get pregnant. If you notice that you are producing hair, maybe on your jawline or your tummy, just unusual areas in your body, that could be a sign. Another one is your hair starts thinning out. You will notice that you're having like male pattern baldness on your head. Another one is uh, acne, like cystic acne on your face. These are some signs that you have high levels of male hormones in your body. And the last symptom is cysts in your ovaries, which can be determined by a doctor through an ultrasound scan. If you are showing two out of these three symptoms, then you can be diagnosed with PCOS. So with all that being said, what can you do to boost your chances of conceiving? The first one, which is something that has definitely worked for me, is tracking your cycle. Tracking your cycle can help you see a pattern to your cycle. It can help you understand your cycle, identify ovulation, and of course, plan to have sex during your fertile window to increase your chances of conceiving. Now, how can you track your cycle with PCOS? This is where it gets very tricky, especially if you have a regular cycle. You can arrive at your most fertile days by doing the simple math. So let's say you have a 45 day cycle or 50 day or 60 day cycle length. What you want to do is to subtract 14 from the length of your cycle to arrive at your most fatal days. I do have videos on this already. So you want to go watch that video and get, get a clear picture. You can also look at the natural signs of ovulation in your body. So during ovulation, your cervix tends to release a cervical mucus, which can be very stretchy and thin and bright colored like raw egg whites. Your boobs can become very tender and sensitive. You can also experience pain on your left or the right side of your abdomen, your lower abdomen. Those are some signs that you are ovulating. Another way to track your ovulation is to test for ovulation. Now with PCOS, it is very difficult for you to track your ovulation or to know when you ovulate because of irregular periods. But if you are testing for ovulation, then you can pinpoint exactly your fertile days, your ovulation day. I have used several ovulation test kits in the past. I have even shown some of them live here on my channel, testing live for ovulation, because it is something that has really helped me, you know, to understand my cycle, understand my fertility, and even helped me conceive when we were trying to conceive. So these ovulation test kits are designed to measure one hormone in your urine, and that is your luteinizing hormone. That is the hormone that triggers your ovulation. Now, when ovulation is approaching, you start testing, you start getting those results. Two lines, two dark lines 
lines flashy smiley face smiley face you know for a woman who is trying who has pcos and is trying to conceive that can even be more tricky because one of the hallmark of our pcos is hormonal imbalance and high luteinizing hormone your luteinizing hormone levels are always high so you can test for ovulation any day and get a positive but it can actually be a false positive a lot of flashy smiley face and smiley face and dark lines and you would think that you are ovulating but you are actually not so relying on a regular ovulation test kits might not be the best for you and that is where my beautiful friend Mira comes in Mira is especially designed for women with PCOS it is an AI lab graded fertility monitor that helps you track not just your luteinizing hormone but your four key fertility hormones like your FSH, your estrogen, progesterone and your LH, your luteinizing hormone. And these four hormones, it compares them together against your baseline, against your specific baseline and then it can pick exactly when your luteinizing hormone rises and with that it is able to predict your ovulation, the when you ovulated. You are also able to see your entire fetal window your six day fetal period and that gives you uh, the opportunity to start trying to conceive throughout that period with the app and the monitor sync together it is able to provide you with clear and accurate results it lets you know if you are actually ovulating or not if, and with that you don't have to spend money on regular OPKs getting a lot of false negatives and having high hopes that you are ovulating when you are not the link to this to this hormone monitor will be in the description box my discount code will also be there so you can check it out and get one for yourself I'm also going to be talking about this in a future video so please stick around for that video if you want to hear everything I have found out for myself about Mira okay have sex during your fertile days so if you are testing for ovulation and you're able to figure out when your ovulation period would be then you want to start having sex during that period frequent intercourse also replenishes the amount of sperm in your reproductive tract so whenever an egg is released there's always sperm there to fertilize the egg increase the amount of intimacy you have it can be every day or every other day to, to increase your chances of getting pregnant work on your weight if you are overweight then you want to work on your weight because this can significantly increase your chances of getting pregnant according to studies about 40 to 85 percent of women with pcos are obese and these fat cells in your body releases estrogen which can disrupt with your hormone balance and also affect ovulation and studies have also shown that losing 5 to 10 percent of your body fat can help to control your pcos and ultimately help you conceive if you are trying to conceive i'm talking about weight loss one of the things you can do to help you achieve that is to exercise regularly Exercise can help you lose weight if you are obese and trying to get pregnant. Exercising can help to regulate your cycle. Studies have shown that some women who were originally diagnosed with an ovulation that's not been able to ovulate because of their body weight were able to ovulate again and even had babies after losing some weight. Moderate exercise can help to reduce the risk of miscarriage in women with PCOS during pregnancy. So exercising is something you want to include in your lifestyle. And nothing too serious nothing rigorous you don't have to do the craziest workouts to lose weight you want to do something you can sustain something you can sustain every day 10 to 15 minutes so that is how you see the changes come another very big one that can cause massive changes if you work on it right now is your diet studies have shown that insulin resistance is one of the biggest causes of pcos and this is caused by too much sugar in your body from the foods that you eat studies have also shown that a lot of women who are obese overweight and women that have pcos crave a lot of carbohydrates and when you eat carbohydrates it spikes up your insulin and when your insulin rises that can cause your body to store fat in inappropriate places in your body like your tummy it can also lead to your testosterone levels rising and that can mess up with your hormones now i am not saying you can't eat carbohydrates at all no our bodies actually need some levels of carbohydrates but cutting down on the amount you take can help to improve your pcos symptoms and improve your chances of conceiving according to studies women who cut down on carbohydrate by 20 percent or 50 percent saw massive significant changes in their fertility so that is something you want to work on what are you eating what do you love eating what do you crave there are some debates about what type of diet is best for women with pcos some women have claimed that a low carbohydrate diet have helped them you know reverse their pcos symptoms uh, some other women disagree 
so um you know i did my research on this and from my personal experience i can tell you that all of this diet works okay i have tried the low carbohydrate diet i have tried the keto diet i, I did this you know with my uh, hormonal imbalance experience and i saw significant changes I told you guys that you know I was supposed to go see a dermatologist to help with my acne issues but once I changed my diet I didn't have to pay any money I didn't have to see any doctor my hormones and you know everything I was experiencing just subsided so I believe that a low carb diet can help both me and my husband does it we have done a keto diet many times we use this diet to lose some weight and you know stay in shape and yeah it comes with a lot of restrictions but it can definitely work apart from women with PCOS a lot of women with other fertility issues have tried a keto diet and they have also seen significant changes and the last one is the Mediterranean diet so the Mediterranean diet is an anti-inflammatory diet and according to researches it is the most beneficial in helping women with PCOS bringing their, their, their symptoms under control so this is something that you definitely want to look into the keto diet the low carb diet and the Mediterranean diet but whatever you do focus on eating healthy it's a lot of healthy fats and healthy protein cut down on carbohydrate as much as you can there are a lot of apps out there that you can you know download to help you measure the amount of carbs that you that you consume every day there are a lot of resources okay on youtube and online so yeah this is something i would definitely uh, encourage you ladies to look into and the last thing you can do that doesn't require any stress at all is sleep i know that when we think about sleep it's like an afterthought like i will sleep at night i will sleep when i'm tired but you know that a lot of women with pcos also struggle to sleep so this is something that you actually want to make an effort to do with a conscious decision to do you want to take your time get into a routine to help you sleep so when we sleep our bodies get a chance to to repair replenish and reset sleep can also improve your nervous system and improve your insulin sensitivity which is something you may be dealing with right now if you have pcos so you want to make a conscious effort to sleep to get your body to relax you want to aim seven eight or nine hours of uninterrupted sleep and there are actually some techniques that you can practice to help your body relax and get a good sleep you can play some calming music music is always a way to help our brains and our muscles and our body to just relax and fall asleep it works for babies it also works for adults another one is ocean wave sounds this is something that works for all my babies it, i just put on that ocean sound and you know they start dozing off i don't know how it happens the brain there's a connection between the brain and those waves and you know it just helps your body to relax you can also just pick up a book look if you're someone that doesn't like reading and you find it and you find it difficult to sleep what you can do is just pick up a book and you will find yourself sleeping immediately the reading the letters i don't know will just induce sleep on you so instead of being on your phone scrolling scrolling which is actually bad for your fertility and your health you can get a book any book it doesn't have to be something you like just pick it up and just before you go through the first chapter or the first paragraph i guarantee that you will be drowsing and dozing off and what you shouldn't do is nighttime snacking if you have a habit of snacking before going to bed that is something you want to stop doing you don't have enough time for your body to break down that that food and metabolize it into your body before you go to bed so cut down on screen time at night or bedtime cut down on nighttime snacking and you will see how your health your fertility would flourish so yeah ladies these are some habits that you can develop to help improve your chances of conceiving if you have tried medications maybe even surgery or if your doctor has told you that there is no chance for you to conceive there is no hope for you then why not try this lifestyle habit just start building on them you know gradually and gradually you know it takes time it takes time for you to change your diet it takes time for your body to get used to exercising it takes time for a lot of these things to start to start working but you have to be patient with the process and I, I guarantee you you will see some massive changes and yeah if you guys found this video helpful then please give it a thumbs up leave your comments down below let me know if you have any questions thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you in my next one Bye.